Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Ibanez, one of the most influential and beloved brands for guitarists, especially amongst metal players. That being said, I've never felt totally comfortable reviewing Ibanez instruments. Now, while I play, well, pretty much exclusively metal, I have a bias towards the classic dad guitars. I've never managed to fall in love with the brand as much as the diehard Ibanez zealots. To get some perspective, I decided to ask you guys over Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram about your passion for Ibanez. I found the answers interesting, and I thought you might too. So without further ado, here are five ways that Ibanez guitars are just better, according to you, the community. Actually, Hunter from the future here. This is embarrassing, I can't count. You guys liked a lot about Ibanez. There's six points plus two honorable mentions that I felt didn't really go with the rest of the list. Um, so let's get into it. First up, one of the most popular answers was nostalgia. Realistically, if this is an ongoing series, this is gonna be a popular answer for just about any brand. In general, we all have an affinity towards the guitars we started on. And something drew us to that guitar, whether it was the shape or the vibe, before we even really knew what we liked about it. But particularly with Ibanez, for those pointy metal focused guitars and an entry level price point, Ibanez has some of the most reliable and consistent options. Not to mention popular, most of us at some point have run into an Ibanez Geo. And look how many there are too. They've got affordable options in just about everyone's favorite color. They've also got the same neck shapes as the more expensive ones, which makes them great for inexpensive mod project platforms. And in fact, for a lot of people that started playing with Ibanez, that might have been their first modding experience as well. With the right upgrades, they can be great shredder guitars on a budget, which leads us nicely into the next point. Number two, the necks. By far, the most common answer to why Ibanez players love their guitars is the neck, and not just one thing about it. Everything from the thinness to the comfort of the shape to the wide, thin fingerboards. Ibanez was a key pioneer in popularizing these super slick specs geared towards the shred. And if you're a fan of the super flat 16 inch fingerboard radii, Ibanez has you covered with a huge selection of models. Flat tops, arch tops, demarzios, bare knuckles, ebony, roasted maple, whatever tickles your fancy, Ibanez probably has it with their famously or infamously, whichever way you look at it, fast neck shapes. A third point that was brought up a lot is the Ibanez artist. But before we talk about them, let's talk about you. And as an artist, why you should know about today's sponsor, DistroKid. Pro YouTube remove, how clean was that segue? If you're creating music and looking to start making money off of it, DistroKid is hands down the best way to get your music distributed on all the major platforms. iTunes, Apple Music, Google Play, Amazon, Spotify, a whole bunch of others I'm probably forgetting about. The point is, if you know of a music distribution platform, chances are DistroKid will get you on it. And it's super easy. Let's just upload a song right now. my DistroKid page, I'm gonna click upload, just want it on Spotify, untick all this stuff, type in my name if it wasn't there already, uh, I'm gonna misspell it for some reason, I'm gonna try to fix that, and uh, it's still misspelled, but I guess we'll get back to that later. Upload my album art, or I guess I get distracted first, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Usually this is a lot quicker process if uh, you're actually concentrating on it. Oh, there we go, there it is. Select the genre from the drop down menu, rock, and I don't know, I guess pop. Why not? Select the file, type in this shit, take that shit, get distracted again. I really have no idea what I'm doing at this point. Uh, I'm back, I decided I wanted more stores. Finally realized the name is wrong, so I'm gonna fix that. Select additional services. Oh, this is cool, so you know how you can embed music into Instagram stories, so I'm just gonna make that available too. Bunch of other features like content ID is also available here. I'm not really too concerned about it. We'll clarify that's not an invitation for anyone to rip my stuff off. Just ask me. Take this shit, click upload, and we're done. And there's even a pre-sale page you can use to promote the single while it's processing. I do have the priority count, so processing is a little quicker for me, but it still generally doesn't take that long. And there we go. And look at that. I've already received an email from DistroKid telling me that we're Gucci. And making changes is super easy too, so now that I'm realizing that Instagram music is a thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and edit the other two that's up there so that way I can embed them into stories as well. Easy as that. So huge thanks to DistroKid for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. If you're an artist and you're looking to make money off your music, you should be using DistroKid. Pricing starts at just 20 bucks for unlimited uploads. You keep 
all your earnings. And if you use the link below, you can even get 7% off to get you started. And back to what makes Ibanez better, you guys pointed to the artists that use them to make their music. And it's no secret, Ibanez has a ton of very talented, very influential artists on its current and past artist roster. Steve Vai and Joe Satriani are two that are mentioned the most often, but also Monkey from Korn, Darren Malakian from System of a Down, Tim Henson and Scott LePage from Polyphia, Yvette Young from Covet, which by the way, have you guys seen that green sparkle slime signature of hers? It's nuts. Now, maybe you're one of those people that's like, well, I would never play a brand just because someone else does. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's not the sole reason so many players choose to play Ibanez. But you can't deny that it's nice to know that guitar you play is made by the same brand that some of your favorite artists at that level trust for their professional needs. The fourth point you guys brought up are the aesthetics. As someone who just started paying closer attention to Ibanez recently, I wholeheartedly agree with this point. When it comes to finish options, Ibanez absolutely kill it. You got bright colors, burl tops. I mean, look at this Axion label RGA 61 AL from last year. I forgot what they're called, but the Blue Burl and Seafloor Coral colored guitars from this year, even back to the Gem or the Cracked Mirror Paul Stanley Iceman, when they want to, Ibanez is not shy about making guitars that stand out from the very crowded competition. And the fifth point related to that, the headstock shape specifically got a huge number of shoutouts from the Ibanez fans. I'll admit, I didn't see that one coming. Now, as a staunch defender of the old Epiphone headstock and part-time guitar designer, I consider any headstock shape that less than 50% of people don't totally hate a relative success. The Ibanez headstock, not only do most people not hate it, it's clear from your responses that a lot of people really love it. And what's doubly impressive is that it's a relatively pointy headstock. A lot of pointy headstocks can end up looking generic, but not only is the Ibanez one recognizable without the logo, it manages to do so without being tacky or gimmicky. Credit where credit is due, that is a massive achievement. And the last thing that came up time and time again was the names. Okay, there were a lot of sarcastic answers about this one. It's definitely divisive. It's like the guitar equivalent of uh, exotics versus imports, but hear me out on this one. Yes, they look like Wi-Fi codes. Yes, it makes sorting through use listings an absolute nightmare. But despite the fact that they can quickly get out of hand and the SKU numbers lack any air of personality, uh, a bit of my opinion may have snuck in there, having the guitar equivalent of a Dewey Decimal System does have its advantages. If you're savvy with the Ibanez number and letter arrangement, you can quickly identify guitar specs without actually ever seeing it, or at least I've been told. So those were the main points for why you love Ibanez, but there were a couple of minor points too. First one was Godot locking tuners. Ibanez has a great relationship with Godot. Once you get high enough up in the lineups, like with the FR800 or Axion Label Series, for example, you're getting Godot locking tuners. They're so good, they feel so solid, and you don't find them nearly as often on any other major brand. I felt like it didn't belong in the main list since you do have to cross a certain price threshold. It's not applicable to their entire product range, but it is definitely something to love. And the second honorable mention is the number of options for extended range players. Ibanez has always been great with supporting the downtune boys, and in the past, they were basically one of the only shows in town if you wanted a decent number of choices for extended range. Not so much the case anymore. In recent years, ESPs stepped up their games, Solar's in there, Schecter has a buttload, but I still felt it was deserving of an honorable mention since we owe a lot to Ibanez for popularizing it for the mass market and pushing those other brands forward. And they've still got some of the coolest ones on the market. The purple Axion label I keep bringing up comes in seven string form. There's a fan fret flat top with Fishman fluences, this transparent fluorescent green one with a maple board, Monkey's new signature model with the Evertune. I mean, there's a lot more competition now, but Ibanez is still at the top of their game. So those were yours, the community's answers to why Ibanez guitars are just better. And some things to keep in mind if you're looking for a new guitar and considering Ibanez. Now, do you agree with that list? Is there anything I missed out? I'd love to know in the comments. And if you're sad that you missed out, well, maybe you should be following me on Instagram and Twitter. And do you like this style of quick fire points? If so, which brand should be covered next? There are so many cool guitar brands. There's Fender, there's PRS, there's ESP, there's Gibson, even newer, smaller ones like Chapman or maybe Solar. Totally up to you. 
let me know. If I know one thing about guitars, we like to talk about why we love our guitars. Leave your suggestions below. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. Maybe consider subscribing or even hitting that notification bell. That way you don't miss any future uploads. Or don't, you prick. Links to social media, merch, the Patreon community, and the Discord server are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.